Good morning. Welcome to worship. I hope you noticed our new projector and our new screen is here. Yay! So we can leave the lights on. We don't have to do that whole thing where we turn the lights off sometimes. Um, Hopefully it is better for those of you that are worshiping with us online as well. We're still working out some of the kinks and some of the backgrounds that we can and can't use for online streaming, but we'll get there. I do want to, I'm moving the announcements up to the beginning of worship today. I want to call your attention to a few things, but first of all, welcome, especially if you're visiting with us today. Um, Those of you worshiping online, make sure if you have any joys or concerns to share that you put those in the comments and we'll get to them later in the service. For those of you inside, there are, um, here in the sanctuary, there are friendship pads to pass along. Please make sure you find time to do that during the service. Um, A couple of announcements. First of all, your bulletin is full. I mean, you can pretty much hold your bulletin in one hand and your calendar in the other right now for the next couple of weeks. There are lots of things starting up. Um, Next week is what we call Rally Day. So we will um, have a lot of things starting next week. We'll have a ministry fair. We'll have um, open houses for the Sunday school rooms. We're going to have some activities. Um, Lots of things going on. I do need my bulletin to do this, don't I? So I can see what you're looking at, because I put check marks on all the things that I was going to. um, Just take a look at it. Um, We'll be posting throughout the week on our Facebook page of all the things that are starting up as well, but where you, especially look where you might be helpful. If you have some gifts or some time, even if it's just one Sunday a month that you could be an usher, a greeter, help with hospitality, anything like that. Start thinking about that and praying about that because we do have places to plug people in. One special announcement that I have to make is that on the 13th of September, which is a Tuesday, a week from Tuesday, at 6.30 p.m. we will have a special church conference. It is for the sole purpose of approving Vince Pepin, who normally comes to our second service when we had two services, but Vince has um, moved into ministry. He is serving right now as a lay servant at Port Washington United Methodist Church and has discerned that God has called him into full ministry. So because he belongs to us, we have to approve him to move forward. So it won't take long. It'll be 6.30 in Fellowship Hall on the 13th. That is all I have for announcements. Um, You may remain seated today while we sing our gathering song, number 601, Thy Word. Let's sing. Join me in the call to worship. 
Blessed and righteous God, our truth and grace are revealed to us as we search your holy word. We come, we come today, today to, to listen to, to the, the word of the Lord. Lord. Gracious God, you help us to know you through your holy word, which guides and blesses us. We come, we come today, today to, to worship, worship the, the Lord, Lord our God. God. Holy God, we gather to worship and praise you to learn from your word and fellowship with others. We come today to praise the Lord our God. Amen. Please join me in the unison prayer. Your word is a lamp to our feet, our guide through the dark, the wisdom and the truth that we follow each day. Your word is sweeter than honey, yet sharper than swords, is healing and justice and ours to obey. Your word is our understanding of grace, peace and love, the reason we gather to worship today. Amen. You may be seated. Please, please hear the word of God in Psalm 121. I raise my eyes toward the mountains. Where, where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. God, won't you let your foot slip? slip? Your protector won't fall asleep on the job. No, Israel's protector never sleeps or rests. The Lord is your protector. The Lord is your shade right beside you. The sun won't strike you during the day, neither will the moon at night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. God will protect your very life. The Lord will protect you on your journeys, whether going or coming, from now until forever. From All right, our scripture reading comes from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through chapter 4, verses 5. But you must continue with the things you have learned and found convincing. You know who taught you. Since childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures that help you to be wise in the ways that lead to salvation through faith that is Christ Jesus. Every scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for showing mistakes, for correcting, and for training character so that, per that, per so that the person who belongs to God can be equipped to do everything that is good. I'm giving you this commission in presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is coming to judge the living and the dead and by his appearance in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready to do it, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Correct, confront, and encourage with patience and instructions. There will come a time when people will not tolerate sound teaching. They will collect teachers who say that they want to hear because they are self-centered. They will turn their back to the truth and turn to myths, but you must keep control of yourself in all circumstances. Endure suffering, do the work of a preacher of the good news, and carry out your service fully. Thank you. I didn't realize what a mess I was going to make by dumping that on the floor. <laughs> we'll have to pick it up. So it's back to school week, last week. Then they get a break and then you have to start all over again with getting up early, right? Back to church programming and we're ending our summer worship times. This is the last Sunday till next year that we'll have one service at 9.30. So we're easing into a new worship series based on getting to know the Bible again. For some of you, it's just all review. For others, it might be the first time they are hearing some of it. But this week, we're laying the foundation and playing off the back-to-school theme. It's back to basics for everybody. We talk about the Bible. We use it in worship every week. We call it different things. We call it the Word of God for the people of God, the Holy Scriptures, the Good Book, God's Word. Sometimes it's just listed as scriptures or readings. But what is it? And why should we really care? Well, as I told the children, our entire existence as people of God and as Christians are based on the words in this book. It's our foundation. 
You could say it's the most important book that we know. So that said, the question is, how well do you know your Bible? Do you read it? Do you know how to read it? We're going to be addressing some of these in the next several weeks, but for today, it's just an introduction. Now, this worship series is going to be a little bit different than our fun Toy Story series, which I'm going to try to interject, inject? I don't know which word I'm looking for, but we'll try to have some fun with it. And once we get into it, there'll be more slides with information. We'll do some bulletin inserts with information. And this might be a shocker to some of you, but we're actually going to use our Bibles during worship. We have some in the pews. Now, if you don't have a Bible at home, there are some right out on that little table out there. Um, some of them are large print, some of them are smaller print, but they're right out there by Mark, and you can simply take one. Now, if you have a favorite Bible at home, I encourage you to bring it to worship in the next month or so. We might even crack it open. So that's the roadmap of where we're going to be going for the next couple of months. A reading from 2 Timothy says that you have to continue with the things you have learned. You know who taught you, and since childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures that help you be wise in a way that leads to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. So we're talking about foundations today. And two things have to work together in our Christ body community to keep it vital, growing, and self-conscious, yet selfless. First, we have to know our tradition, and we have to learn from it. Second, we must know that all our, all our most basic scriptural roots are nourished and strengthened at one source, the Bible. So I put some ABCs up here, and these are some things that I thought of as I was putting this together. Why should we care about this? Maybe you have, I don't know how to even begin reading the Bible. I don't even know what it is. Or maybe what does it have to do with us living here today? And um, one of the questions that came up, I think a year and a half ago, we did some questions on the Bible. One of them was, what's with all the violence, especially in the Old Testament? Or don't we just need the New Testament? Well, we're going to be talking about all of that. Now, it would be impossible for me to meet each of you where you're at in worship with your Bible knowledge. So as I said before, this is kind of the ABCs, and you might have to just review and kind of hang in with us on that. Unless we read the Bible, unless we study it, learn what's in it, and feel comfortable with it in our hands and on our tongues, we cannot truly love the Word of God. Sometimes we're intimidated by it, afraid of it, shocked by it, or we just simply ignore it. So here's where we start today. Every scripture is inspired by God, and given to us in the Bible. Scholar Leslie Newbigin wrote that most of us treat the Bible as an anthology just of helpful thoughts from which we can obtain comfort, guidance, and direction. That's not what it is. It is rather an interpretation of the whole history from creation to the end and is told from the point of view of the people who God chose to be the bearers of his purpose. That's what the Bible writers said themselves. Jeremiah had to use his words to share the message of, that God gave him. And centuries later, Peter said that although the Holy Spirit led them, men and women did the speaking. Our Bible was forged from a crisis of faith. Though many of the stories and writings were passed down orally from generation to generation, scholars believe that the writing and the compilation of these writings and most of the Hebrew scriptures, which we call the Old Testament, began when D King David was in reign. This writing down of these stories gained momentum during the Babylonian invasion of Judah and when all of the Israelites were exiled from their country. Many of the prophets that we read were letters and encouragement to those in exile. And it was their origin stories, going back to who they were and whose they were, that kept their spirits up during the exile. The Bible is really a collection of all of these books, 
all written by different people in different times. It starts with stories of the people who lived in the ancient Near East thousands of years ago. Then there are some books of poetry. Then there are the emotional prophets, warning about the wrath of the armies of the day. Then there are the gospels, which tell us about the birth, life, death, and resurrection and ministry of Jesus, what he said and what he did. And then following that are 21 letters written by apostles of the time to Christians living in the Roman Empire over 2,000 years ago. The Bible ends with a book called The Revelation, which is filled with fantastical characters like multi-headed beasts and dragons. We've got a timeline up here. You can see where some of these things were written. It's not a book of instructions that you have to adhere to before you die. It's not a magic eight ball that can tell you what's going to happen. It's not something you can use as a weapon. And it is not a science textbook. It is a book of stories. It is our story. And it begins in the Bible with the book of, of Genesis. It focuses on a man of, named Abraham and his family of descendants who later became known as the Israelites and the Jews. There are creation stories. There are two kingdoms. There are Israel and Judah. There are wars and battles for control. There's a temple that is destroyed. There's so much going on in the Bible. Did we get to? Yes, we got all the way up to when Jesus was born. And that's just a brief outline of what is happening in the Bible. But I also want you to realize that on that other side, there were other things written. There were other worlds being built at the same time as our biblical world that we study. At the same time that Babylon was taking over Judah and exiling all of the Israelites and destroying the temple, Buddha was born in Asia. Ten years later, Confucius was born. And while the temple is being rebuilt in 536, the classical Greek period of democracy in Athens and Greek literature was happening that led up to Socrates and Plato and King Herod and Julius Caesar lived at the same time. There's so much going on. And we're going to be looking at all of this in the weeks to come. For now, I want you to remember that the biggest takeaway is that the Bible is our foundation. It is our cornerstone. And when we add prayer to reading and studying the Bible, look out, because the possibilities are endless. May it be so. Amen. So we're going to sing a song about a foundation. It's called How Firm a Foundation. Let's, let's stand, if you are able, and sing together. Verses 1 through 3 of number 529.
I'm going to remind that um, someone needs to turn the coffee on. Got it. See, you know, when you're juggling lots of different roles during the Sunday, you do have to, you know, make some announcements. We come to the table today knowing that we're not worthy, but that through the mercy of Christ, we are able to be here and we are given God's grace. And so let us pray. Holy God, by the baptism of your Son, Jesus Christ, and by his suffering, death, and resurrection, we know that you gave birth to your church, that you deliver us from sin and death, and that you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. We also know that on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples and said, take and drink from this, all of you. This is the new covenant sealed by my blood for the forgiveness of sins for you and for many. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Please stand if you are able and let's sing our closing song together. We'll sing it through twice. Shalom to you. ice cream Sundays in Fellowship Hall. For those of you that are here, it is Sunday, Sunday today. So um, we have plenty. So please come and join us for a time of fellowship. But n know that um, our community of faith and our scriptures and our prayer life are the bricks that we lay that create a foundation for a place where others want to be a part so go from this place to let others know about this and live your life following Jesus so that others can see it in you through your love. And go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Now.